Hi, and welcome to my channel. This Nikon zoom lens cost me £150. This Nikon zoom lens cost me a pound. Let's see if it's any good. Back before Christmas, I was looking around on eBay, as I do fairly regularly, and looking at uh, Nikon lenses, um, and I saw a 4386 Nikkor Zoom, um, and the bidding price, um, in fact it didn't have any bids on it, um, with a few minutes to go, was a pound. So, I bid a pound, and I got it. <laughs> and be lying slightly if I said I got it for a pound, because I had to pay postage. So, I actually got it for around eight pounds. But, that's still an incredibly cheap Nikon zoom lens. Now, for anybody who knows anything at all about Nikkor zooms, the most maligned and the one with the worst press out of all of them is the poor old 4386, which is a real surprise because for 18 years, from 1963 onwards, this was Nikon's best-selling zoom. In fact, it was only the second original zoom design to come out of Japan. So it's quite an important historical lens in many ways. Um, this is a later version. Um, this has the nice coloured multi-coating. The early version didn't. Is it any good? Well, I used to use this lens many years ago, not this particular example, uh, when I was a struggling uh, theatre photographer and I couldn't really afford expensive lenses. I bought one of these, more or less from a junk shop, um, for very little money. And I used it quite extensively. Uh, and I had no problem with it. Uh, and I was quite surprised to see that it was um, thought of as poorly as it is. So I thought I'd pick up another example. Uh, by the way, this is a beautifully made lens. Lovely and solid, all metal. And I would give it a fair test. Um, and that's exactly what I've done. Here I am walking towards a place where I do a lot of testing out with uh, cameras and uh, new lenses and things like that. Uh, a place called Hollow Ponds, which is uh, very near to Whipscross Hospital in East London, which is where I'm just going past. And I'm heading out to uh, We'll try the 4386 zoom out on the Sunway set. It's quite a busy bit of road here. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll get some nice results. It's uh, not super warm, uh, but uh, needs must um, get out and do things, even though it's uh, not super brilliant. Uh, I think I'll head down and take a look at one of the songs and uh, there is bird life. Oh, let's see if I can get any interesting pictures down there.
Not the whole lot here. Swans, coots, ducks, people running around. <laughs> Even odd person swims in here occasionally, but um, I think they're pretty much certifiably mad. But, uh, well, they'd have to be at this time of year. But it's a lovely spot. Well, I'm somewhat fighting the um, GoPro running out of power, which it uh, seems to be doing fairly effectively. I should have charged a little bit better before I went out. But I'm on a little bit of a learning curve because um, this is not one of my normal ways of doing things. Anyway, I shall move on and see whether I can find some more interesting things to photograph a man singing over there. Great fun. Yahala Ponds has been um, a boating lake since the Edwardian period and um, originally there was a swimming outdoor lido um, built over in the trees over that way which uh, was actually rebuilt several times but uh, fell out of use I think in the late 1970s uh, was demolished um, but uh, it's a lovely spot and this was really the only place to go and get proper exercise outside during all the periods of lockdown that we've had. Um, that's been, um, I think, a bit of a godsend for East London. Anyway, we'll wander through and see what else we can see. Um, quite a few people about today, so I always get a bit embarrassed about vlogging in front of a camera when there are lots of people around. But we'll just uh, give it a go and see. Uh -huh. Well, I've almost come to a conclusion that it's too cold for photography today. My hands are frozen, my feet are frozen, just about everything's frozen, but I'm still carrying on. I'm also testing out this wonderful Billingham bag that's on my shoulder that I got from a charity shop for very little money for a Billingham. Um, and so far it's absolutely fantastic in as much as anything is difficult when you are absolutely done up in heavy coat and gloves and all of that sort of stuff and you're trying to fall not uh, particularly deeply into mud but um, we are going forwards and finding some more stuff Absolutely love being surrounded by the woods like this. Uh, lots of different textures, even though these textures are extremely cold and I stopped feeling my hands some time ago. Um, but there's absolutely brilliant stuff to photograph. There always is down here. I come back again and again and again and every time I find something different.
Well, I have got thoroughly cold enough, I think. So I am going to wander back home and have a nice cup of coffee. Uh, go back round past the boathouse and then 15 minutes walk and coffee pot on. So, catch you back there. Please excuse some of the sound issues I had in that video. I'm not used to using a radio mic on my lapel outside. Anyway, the results from this lens are very interesting. Um, you can see a comparison between a full aperture shot with the 4386 and a full aperture shot with a 60 millimeter micro nickel, which is one of the sharpest lenses I have ever encountered. At full aperture, at least in the center of the frame, there's not a lot of difference. Maybe a little bit softer, but not a huge amount. And if you're gonna be using this lens, as I think a lot of people will do, for portraits at the 86 end, then Slight softness at the corners, not too much of a problem. There's a little bit of vignetting at um, full aperture. That clears up by a 5.6. And by 5.6 as well, the corners of the frame are pretty much caught up with a center. Again, I'll, um, I'll put up some examples. Um, but this is certainly not the dog of a lens that um, many people would have you believe it is. In fact, I had the 35 to 70 um, the, the kit lens that was supplied on the, uh, I think it was the Nikon 401, F401, um, and several others at the time. Um, a, a plastic fantastic lens, which um, not super high quality, and it wasn't any better than this. And that one is not the most popular lens in the world, but it's certainly not given the bad press this poor old girl is. So I actually think that for the right kind of price, one of these, and, and they are absolutely wonderful to handle, would make a really good addition to most people's Nikon lens kit. Uh, I intend to try it out in future with video because I think it'll be absolutely superb with video. Probably use it on a speed booster with, um, with my Panasonic. So, for a pound, well, you'll be very lucky to get one of these for a pound, but um, I see them all the time um, at 20 pounds, 30 pounds, um, and just sitting there without people bidding on them. Um, so I, I you know, recommend picking one of these up. They're dead solid. Um, they're really quite compact. Um, if you take the um, 85 millimeter f1.4, um, you know, uh, not really a um, comparison in maximum aperture, but, um, oh, the other point is that this is consistent aperture right through its zoom range. So it's f3.3, uh, I think it is, um, f3.5, um, all the way through its zoom range, um, which is actually, better than the 35 to 70. I must also give a particular amount of praise to the black and white reproduction on this lens um, because it has um, a lovely luminescence to the highlights. So now that's a lens fault in many ways, that's the light diffusing, um, but it gives a very vintage and very, um, a very old fashioned look, similar perhaps to a Leica or um, a similar Litz lens from 
maybe the 1930s, and I've got a couple of those, and they have a very similar kind of silvery glow. Um, so yeah, for black and white, it's a superb lens. While we're on the subject of bargains, keep your eyes open on charity shops. This wonderful Bellingham bag, which actually has had very, very little wear by the look of it, um, I got from uh, a charity shop and I paid very little money for it. Considering these um, cost, well, usually over 200 pounds, um, I paid under 50 pounds for it. Um, it's an interesting bag and I don't quite know which model it is. It's certainly large, but if you know what model of Billingham it is, uh, perhaps you let me know in the comments. Um, I'll be doing a review of it in a later episode um, and um, we'll see if they really are worth the money. Okay, so if you've enjoyed this video, think about hitting the like button and if you've enjoyed the channel in general, then help out by subscribing. It really does make a difference. You'll see some new links in the description. Uh, you can uh, go on to uh, my, my website and buy prints that you see in any of my episodes. Uh, you can also help me out by supporting me on Patreon. So there are lots of different ways to help out the channel. Um, and it's great to see you all and get your comments. So for the moment, take care and... Keep taking pictures.